an interesting question about what we do um, in high-grade non-Hodgkin lymphoma when the disease comes back. And um, of course, the commonest high-grade lymphoma that we see is something called diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Um, and as many of you will know, a significant proportion of people with DLBCL will be cured, uh, having been treated with standard RCHOP immunochemotherapy. But unfortunately, um, a proportion of individuals um, will get a recurrence. And the question is, what do we do in those circumstances? Um, the standard approach is to use second line uh, platinum containing chemotherapy, so typically RGDP or RDHAP or RICE, and once remission is achieved, consolidate that remission using, uh, using high-dose chemotherapy and a stem cell and autolog autologous stem cell transplant. So that's the typical approach, but um, some people um, it doesn't work for because either um, the response isn't adequate, or even if it is and transplant takes place, the disease comes back afterwards. Or in certain circumstances, the individual concern may not be well enough for, for a transplant to be considered. So there are a number of circumstances where um, high-grade lymphoma, we have to think about other measures. And there are developing, there's a developing field uh, in terms of um, new treatments for people with relapsed and refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. CAR-T approaches is one, and this is where we take lymphocytes from the blood, send those to a central laboratory. In the central lab, they're engineered or re-engineered to recognize and attack lymphoma cells. And when the um, CAR-T product is returned to the uh, patient four to six weeks later, those uh, lymphocytes uh, are ready to attack and destroy the lymphoma cells. And we know that this can produce really outstanding results in some patients. There are some side effects of the procedure, so-called uh, the so-called cytokine release syndrome, which can um, lead to low blood pressure, rapid heart rates and kidney problems. And there's also a neurological syndrome uh, where people can become drowsy or confused and in certain circumstances develop convulsions. But in fact, we're now very aware of these risks. We know how to manage them. And um, the, the outcomes with CAR-T are, uh, are looking uh, more robust. So that's CAR-T approaches. There are also um, approaches using bi-specific antibodies. You will have no doubt heard of um, rituximab, and that's very commonly used in lymphoma practice. Um, and that just attack or, or links on to one particular uh, target on the cell surface in the case of rituximab CD20. Bispecific antibodies um, bind on to two different targets. And uh, we know that that approach can be uh, very successful in some cases. Um, and trials are ongoing at the present time to evaluate this uh, in, in the clinic. And finally, there are some um, other molecules, so-called antibody drug conjugates, which is linking an antibody which binds onto a particular tar target, so linked to a particular cell poison. And uh, long castuximab tesserine or ADCT402 is one such, which um, has produced some interesting results and has recently been given FDA approval in the United States for use in relapsed refractory diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So um, the old approaches are still there. They're not applicable to everyone and they don't work for everybody, but there are new approaches being developed, being evaluated all the time. And once again, the role of clinical trials are very important. And so I really would, urge you to um, speak to your clinician about access to a clinical trial of a new molecule if you um, if your disease has come back and um, you have concerns about next steps because it's through clinical trials that 
you can gain access to new therapies that might become the standard treatments of the future.